guys. Hi guys. Welcome back to uh, the Zalinski life. <laughs> that has been a stressful. I don't want to say it's a train wreck because I say that quite a bit, but it hasn't been as wicked awesome as we were hoping at the beginning of the year. It's been a stressful last month for sure. Yeah. So as promised, we're doing a November recap video on our finances. Um, this last month, we didn't have a lot of budget with us videos. We had no cash envelope stuffing videos because we had no money. <laughs> yeah. So it's been You a... can't stuff cash you don't have into envelopes. Yeah, so it's been a pretty lackluster month. But as I said in our last video, there were some things to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. um, some milestones, if you will. Not milestones, but you know, just some things that we could be proud of, sort of. Yeah. So our biggest overspending, so we did overspend this month. We overspent by significantly $2,700, $2,700. That's why our credit card is so much higher. Yeah. So at the beginning of the month, we were sitting at about $4,500 and now we we're sitting at like $6,500, something like that. That sounds about right. Yeah. Not great. Yeah. And a lot of that was the overspending. So Cody only worked nine days this whole month out of the 30. Yeah. So I'm on this new job doing maintenance up north on two and two, and there was some confusion um, with when exactly my days off would be. So I booked a training course that I need for work. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that the week I booked that course, assuming I would be off, my boss assumed I would be at work. So I ended up missing the back half of one shift and the front half of another shift that we weren't counting on. So that kind of, mm -hmm. you know, a whole month's pay out the window that we still got to cover. Yeah. And this rope course is something that he had to have if he wanted to re remain employed. Mm -hmm. It's non-negotiable and it was a very expensive ticket to maintain. Yes, it is not cheap. It was $2,100. <laughs> so the bright side was the first 1,050 of that. We managed to cash flow, but the second 1,050 that would have been cash flowed would have been that week that he wound up missing. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't cash flow it, so it went on the credit card. So that was a big chunk of that $2,700 that we overspent. Um, yeah, I think that's probably like the biggest single um, thing. Yeah, the next biggest thing that kind of put us over was our vehicle, um, which has been... God love living in an apartment. Apparently there's a, an ocean documentary going on in the hallway. It sounds like, it sounds like there's whales in the hallway. God, I hope you guys can hear that. Otherwise we just sound like idiots over here. Okay. So the car, mm -hmm. the car we should have known better. So last month, if you watched that video, we spent just under $1,400. Now that was fine. That was routine maintenance. So that was like a transmission flush an engine oil change. And I think there's an engine flush as well. Mm -hmm. New wind, well, new all season tires a new battery, just like regular maintenance stuff. Now, to be fair, we didn't plan for most of that maintenance stuff financially. We had planned for the tires and the oil change and everything else just yeah. kind of wound up. It's like we have sinking funds for the car, but the sinking funds are one of the things we pull from when we absolutely need money from somewhere else. Yeah. With the idea that like, you know, it's there for just in case when we need it, um, we'll use it. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening was that just all of a sudden we needed all the sinking funds money that wasn't there. Yeah. So um, usually what we do every year is we buy a whole new set of all season tires and we run them through the winter, through the summer, and then we get another set of all season tires. Mm -hmm. It has never been a problem until this year because we cheaped out. Well, normally what I do is I get an all season ice tire, like mm -hmm. ice specific. Mm -hmm. um, and the place that we bought the tires from, there was a bit of a miscommunication there. So they gave me just a standard all season tire. And so, it didn't do shit. Yeah, so, I mean, as seasoned Canadians living in Alberta, we should have known better. Yeah. But uh, we went with them because we thought they were a good deal. And, I mean, they're a good tire. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with them. But the first... Yeah, three months out of the year, they'll be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the first big snowfall we had was not good. Like, we were sliding around corners. We had no braking uh, or stopping power. We were, like, sliding into oncoming traffic sometimes yeah so now, we, thankfully there were no accidents because we drive when it's not busy when and, we can and cody's a very good driver i try to be careful so um needless to say we knew we were gonna have to get new tires asap so we had mm -hmm. to get another new set of winter tires this month which was 680 dollars or no 560 dollars or whatever it was we did get a good deal on the winter tires they're excellent winter tires we've had no problems with them mm -hmm. we're very happy but it was an expensive second purchase and then our car has been having an issue where it's going through a lot of gas and 
we were told maybe it was the emissions purge valve and then it was some other part that wound up needing to be replaced but it's still not quite 100%. Mm -hmm. So the tires and the repair in total were just over $800 and I'm pretty sure there's still work that has to be done. Yeah. So that'll be a next month thing. Yeah. It's better than it was a few weeks ago but not as good as it's supposed to be. Yeah, so our total um, that we spent on car repairs were $915 this month. So there was another basically $1,000. So mm -hmm. between that and the rope course was two grand that we had no way to cover. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other things that kind of added up is we had our baby shower this month, which was at the start of the month, which was fun. Mm -hmm. It was exciting. If you don't know, I'm 33 weeks pregnant right now. Um, we're expecting our first baby in January. So it's an exciting time. We're very thankful. We had a lot of people who showed up. We got pretty much everything we needed for the baby. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's not a lot of extra stuff to get. So we're very thankful that way because we don't have a lot of money left to purchase anything for the baby. Um, but we did still wind up spending a few hundred dollars. We spent just under $300 on food and decor and... Yeah, just the, the general hosting yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was more expensive than I thought it was going to be. When I look at that number, I'm kind of like, what did I think I needed to spend that much money on? But um, we also, I spent some money on one of my girlfriends for her birthday. It was her birthday and I really wanted to treat her. I didn't have the money to do it, but I did it anyways. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and then Cody's gym membership, which was $160. Now this one will kind of even out because the deal is... Yeah, the upfront registration fee will be offset by not paying the membership fee for the first six weeks, so it'll work out to roughly half. Yeah, so the first um, gym membership payment we make is January 6th, so it pays for about half or just over half of that $160, but still it was $160 that we didn't have. So just kind of going over our sheet here, um, our total income for the month was $3,900. About $3,300 of that was from Cody. And then the rest of it was made up from selling stuff around the house. So we sold like an Apple TV, we sold a monitor, we sold a Nintendo Switch, um, I sold some iPhone cases, and I think that was it. Yeah. I don't know why we felt like we both needed a Nintendo Switch. I mean, it, it was just like when we had two vehicles, like yeah, we had two and yeah, we used two, but we only ever used one at a time. Yeah, so yeah, not a great month financially, but again, the reason why I say it's something to celebrate is because despite having you know, at least $2,000, you know, the car and the rope course, at least $2,000 that were completely unavoidable, had to be done, um, didn't have the money to get them done, Cody only had nine days of work, we still managed to pull through. Um, yeah, maybe, sometimes the value in hardship is that you make it to the other end. Yeah, maybe not in, looking in great shape, but all of our bills were paid, we didn't default on anything, mm -hmm. we didn't miss any payments, um, we didn't starve, we didn't lose the house. The apartment, yeah. you know. <laughs> Bills are paid, lights are on, everything's warm, we have food in the fridge. We're doing okay. Yeah. And the reason why I thought it was important to share that is because when you're on a debt-free journey, it never goes according to plan. Like when we started out this year, we had a plan that we were like, we will be out of debt 100% this year. Yeah, we figured it would be by September where we were totally debt-free. And we would have been except circumstances changed mm -hmm. um, with my job. Yeah. And, and things change and sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches in life and not every month mm -hmm. is gonna look good. Some months are gonna suck more than others. This is probably one of the hardest financial months we've had in a long time. Yeah, it's been quite a while since we've Definitely the hardest one of the year. Like there have been worse times in our marriage and our relationship financially, mm -hmm. but. <laughs> well, not, not in our marriage. The marriage is always rock solid. Somehow we're yes. very lucky that way. Yes, um, I mean financially well, speaking. Not lucky, like a lot of work goes into it. But <laughs> in terms of financial times during our marriage, this was one of the worst. Yeah, So, but we wanted to still share it with you guys. Um, we think it's important to be very transparent, very honest, and very real. Like we're not perfect. There's obviously a lot of money we spent there that we didn't need to. Like, mm -hmm. you know, my girlfriend's birthday and Cody's getting a gym membership and, and dining out. We. So embarrassed to even show this. Three hundred and eleven dollars on dining out this month. And once again, I mean, it's not like we're going to the keg yeah. or something like that and like having nice meals. It's like Tim Hortons. We're going to McDonald's and having McMuffins. Yeah, McDonald's. So, um, and I'm not proud of that. You know, that's an obvious red flag of, of why we're still in debt the way that we are. You know, why we're not making the progress that we need to. It's things mm -hmm. like that. Now, admittedly, we're, we've made progress. We're a lot better than we used to be, but there's still room to improve. There's always going to be room to improve. Mm -hmm. Nobody's perfect. So if you're slipping up, if you've had a bad month, um, it's okay. You just keep going. 
Yeah, no, I think part of that for me too is because I feel like the amount of debt we had to pay off and like our, our burn rate versus our income, um, we're setting ourselves up to try run a marathon at a sprint pace. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's times to sprint, but I feel like we're kind of burning ourselves out a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I, I think at least for me, I'm sort of at the, the headspace, like with getting the gym membership where I, I don't necessarily want to slow it down, but I want to create more of an overall lifestyle that I don't have to alter in order to achieve my goals. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is we're trying to do, just create the lifestyle that will get us there. Um, now, admittedly, it is real quick to, like Dave Ramsey says, beans and rice, rice and beans, just get after it. Um, but I feel like we've been trying to do that for five years. Uh, I wrote about it in my blog, how we started out with roughly $60,000 in debt between the two of us. Mm -hmm. Spent five years paying off two hundred thousand dollars, and we still have like thirty-three to go. Yeah. Um, you know, so the math on that isn't great, and I think a lot of that is because of the, you know, the the up and down kind of tortoise and hare thing. We take a, a hard sprint for as long as we're able to, and then we just gas out, fall off the wagon, drop the ball, and then get back at it again. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's very obviously not working for us because it shouldn't have taken us five years and two hundred thousand dollars to pay off, like what. 20 some grand <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that's that's not awesome yeah so we're gonna wrap up this video here otherwise we'll ramble forever yeah I like to ramble um, but speaking of blogs I'm gonna link both down below Cody has started one called dad stash which is centered more around men but there's a lot of great information in there I personally love reading his articles she's and he, biased I'm and, not that good <laughs> and he's a much better writer than I am so I will link that down below if you're interested in reading um, and then we've kind of revived the Zelinsky life blog as well so that's where I will be posting like our financial review so if you actually want to see this very sad yeah. breakdown yes. if you want to see the details of a street of a train wreck <laughs> of our finances it's over there on the blog so you can be nosy and go go through it I mean we've got nothing to hide this yeah. is this is us this is our life so yeah, just dropping balls left right and center <laughs> yep so you can head on over there if you want to go through it and follow along um, and other than that just thanks for being here thanks for being a part of our channel if you're not already mm -hmm. subscribed please do so and we will chat with you guys in the next video Bye. Bye.